it's Louise at Spiral Bright Insight. I'm a galactic and intuitive astrologer and I'm here today to share some thoughts about Jupiter. Now Jupiter is probably one of the most popular planets in astrology. It's certainly the most benefic and the most positive and Jupiter represents many things including abundance, growth, expansion, opportunity. It rules our belief systems, our higher mind. It brings through adventure and opportunities to sort of expand ourselves into uncharted areas perhaps of our lives, of soul growth. It also links very closely to our belief system and in particular to truth. So wherever you have Jupiter in your chart, you are going to experience more, more energy, more abundance, more growth, more opportunity. And Jupiter is particularly active for us all at the moment because it is currently lying at or sitting at 29 degrees of Taurus. Now, um, this is going to be the case for the next five days before Jupiter moves into Gemini. And just to backtrack slightly, Jupiter has a 12 year orbit of the zodiac. So it spends a year in each sign. So there's plenty of time for Jupiter to really work with the themes and the energies of each sign as it moves across. And Jupiter has been in Taurus for the past year, really expanding the Taurian themes, which are about creativity, which are linked to self-worth, to value, to resources, what we need to feel secure and comfortable and safe in our world and also gifts and talents. And it is the gifts and talents that I particularly want to focus on in this video. Um, so. Jupiter at the 29 degree point. This is quite, well, this is a very potent degree. And the 29 degree of every sign is basically in its more positive expression. It is showing us where we have mastered the energy of that sign, where we've worked so hard through all the different degrees, the three deacons of that sign, and we have really achieved everything that we set out to achieve through the transit. However, in its slightly less positive expression, there can be a real sort of panic or even a crisis um, energy that is really um, coming through because there may be parts of that sign and the lessons of that sign that we have yet to master. In its lower expression, it can make, create a real sort of rush or feeling of panic because there may be some lessons or areas that still need to be worked through, that still need to be mastered. And as the planet in question is about to move into a, a new sign, there can be a real sort of crisis or ca even chaos coming around as there is a huge sort of rush to complete what needs to be completed. For me, um, I, I've talked about Taurus um, at great length because Taurus has been so strong lately. But generally, you know, Taurus can bring about themes of our resources. So that is our food supply, our financial system, um, our energy supplies, fuel, you know, clothing, what we need to keep us safe and secure in this world. But as we approach or as we work through the final degree, what is coming through very strongly to me is the theme of gifts and talents, which we associate very strongly with Venus, which is Taurus's ruling planet. And Jupiter at this point of Taurus for me is really expanding and encouraging growth within our internal resources. So that is very much, you know, our values, the values that we carry, the values that are important to lead a really good and strong and positive and fulfilling life. Also the resources that we hold within us that may perhaps be as yet um, un um, tapped into or activated or developed, but resources that really translate as our gifts and our talents and what it is that we have brought through with us to work on, to master and to then be able to share with the world, to really optimize our soul experience here on earth in this incarnation. So 
Taurus is also very creative energy. It is about master um, manifestation. It is about building. It's about building something new from scratch. And so, you know, Taurus, Jupiter at this final degree is also really enhancing our creative gifts and really showing us if we haven't already quite got the hang or um, our heads around it, that we are creator beings and we can create. We are here to create our world and everything that is part of that, including of our experience. So, you know, there can be, um, we may find over the next few days that, you know, there's some themes in the news headlines, you know, in the outer world about finances, perhaps about various um, types of resource. But really for me, this is, is our um, opportunity. The universe is giving this opportunity to really look at what is it that you have brought through that you can use to really, you know, enhance your soul's experience, to serve others and to make a difference in this world as we start to really build and create and work towards our new earth that we are you know we're all here to create so while Taurus is at this degree point it is in a sextile to Neptune which is going to come exact on Friday this week the day after the full moon which is taking place tomorrow full moon in Sagittarius and so this sextile to Neptune which is at 29 degrees of Pisces is a very harmonious aspect but it does still require a little bit of work although there is flow it is not sort of handing as everything on a plate you know there is some effort required and Neptune talking to Jupiter with through Pisces and Taurus is really sort of trying to show us the value of our spiritual selves of a connection to our higher self and also um, our spiritual gifts and talents that perhaps you know may have felt a little bit out of reach or even hidden compressed or repressed up until now but Taurus and Jupiter in Taurus is really calling us to activate those to own them to bring them forward and to see the value in them and how we can add value and how you know they can be added to our toolkit to really um, enhance our experience here so you know Neptune is also very much about the vision so and imagination so there's a real focus on you know being able to take a vision um, and an idea and bring it down ground it into reality through Taurus and actually create it manifest it bring it into being um, in a very tangible and solid and um, permanent way because Taurus is a really solid and strong and persistent and permanent energy that we're working with so, you know this for me is a time where we are going to feel um, much more in tune with our gifts and we may even find that we're no longer scared to use them and to show up and be seen and to claim them and to share them and to even admit that we have them because for a lot of us you know it has been something that we'd rather keep hidden and maybe not make so public but I feel that this transit is really going to start to shift that for us. We may be feeling a lot more intuitive with with the um, sextile to Neptune in Pisces and certainly we're going to be feeling more creative and you know again manifestation be very mindful of what you're saying what you're putting out there what you're thinking of and what you're calling in because in the manifestation our abilities in that area are going to really speed up now Neptune is activating um, Pegasus Shiet in the Pegasus constellation. So this is the winged horse. This is the way shower, the guide. This is very multi-dimensional energy. And this is really bringing in a much more um, higher consciousness, higher awareness and multi-dimensional abilities and consciousness into our world through our spiritual selves, through our higher selves, 
coming down and then being brought even further into the earth realm through the sextile to Tor to Jupiter in Taurus. And of course, Jupiter at the final degree of Taurus as and then as he moves into the early degree of Gemini is activating the Pleiadian stars. And again, this is um, an energy that I talked about in my full moon in Sagittarius video, but the Pleiadian energies are of much higher consciousness. They are very heart centered energies coming through to activate that part of us to really um, help us to live much more with compassion in a much more unity based way. And also, you know, reminding us that play and fun and frivolity are really key parts of being human and also a really good way to raise the frequency. So, you know, this is a very loving energy, very um, 5D, again, that is being expanded, that is being brought through into our um, into our physical experience at this time to really show us that there is another way. So as Jupiter moves into Gemini on Sunday, and that will be Sunday in the UK, perhaps Saturday for um, other parts of the world, and it's going to stay within in Gemini until the 9th of June 2025. So it's going to have you know a good year to get to grips with the Gemini energy. This is expansion in of the Gemini themes. Now, Gemini is our mind. It is the way we learn, how we think, our mindset, our belief system. It is our understanding. Gemini energy is mutable air, so it is very quick. Um, Gemini likes to flip from one thing to the other, so multitasking is very much a Gemini ability and Gemini theme. It is very playful energy. So again, tying in very much with the Pleiadian energies, you know, very youthful, quite childlike, very enthusiastic, um, very quick, very fleet of foot, very funny, very witty, very entertaining, very chatty. Now, in its lower expression, you know, we can get a little bit um, tied up in gossip. So that is something to be mindful of because Jupiter is going to expand the Gemini energy over the next year. Um, but in its higher expression, it's going to expand our understanding of our world, of who we are. It's going to give us access to lots more ideas coming through and um, new beliefs, new awareness. In its lower expression, you know, we may find that we are being overwhelmed with information because the information and the ideas and the stories are going to come in thick and fast. We're going to feel at times as if we are being bombarded with information because Jupiter is going to expand all these ideas, all these stories, all these different threads. So, you know, it may also affect our nervous system because being very much in the head can be quite overwhelming. So, and there's also the potential for great levels of distraction. As so much information comes through, it's going to be quite difficult to really know where to look. There'll be something, you know, coming in from one end, one side, and then there'll be something in from the other. And it, it's going to be a case of, um, you know, there will be almost too much information too much head-based, mind-based focus over the next year. Gemini is the voice, so we're going to find that, you know, we may um, find that our voice is much freer, that we are have more freedom of speech, that we can speak up where if we felt sort of repressed or unable to or scared to talk before, we're going to find that, you know, Jupiter is paving the way to expand and to encourage us to speak and to share our opinions and our ideas. And again, because this is air energy, it's going to be quite difficult to contain it and to censor it and to um, shut it off because energy, air energy is everywhere. So it is very difficult to um, to repress. So again, you know, freedom of the voice is very much coming through with this transit and also the spoken and the written word. So, you know, Gemini is the sign of the teacher, the writer, the speaker. So, you know, we may find that there are a lot more people s stepping into and up to these roles over the next years, especially if this is in your blueprint and it's not something that you've explored or been able to step into so far. This um, transit is really going to encourage that. 
Now, Gemini is, um, according to astrologer Ruth Haddiken, is very much about taking different strands and different threads and weaving them together to help us to make sense of a story or a picture and to give us understanding. But it is about sort of taking um, the different connecting threads of the universe and to, to bring them into wholeness and to give us a much bigger picture through Sagittarius, through the opposing energy of Sagittarius. So this idea really spoke to me because it made me think of the strands of DNA that we have as human beings and the fact that currently for the majority of us, we only have two strands of activated DNA. But it is my understanding, and I'm not an expert in this area, that we have a lot more strands available that have been closed down, that have been shut down and shut off to us until now. That when I was thinking about um, this idea of Gemini being strands and threads, I, I was getting this really strong impression that Jupiter moving through Gemini is going to expand the opportunity and the pathways for these additional and um, these other threads of DNA and strands of DNA to start to come back to us to start to be activated and then when Uranus moves into Gemini on the 7th of July next year 2025 I'm getting the real sense that Uranus is going to awaken and activate a lot of them so this does tie into new gifts and new abilities coming online which is very much part of our ascension process and of remembering that we are so much more than we have been led to believe that we have so much we have such powerful gifts you know so much of which we have forgotten or we've become disconnected from but you know this feels like the start of something of a period where we are going to really start to reconnect to you know a much deeper understanding of who we are and what we are capable of and why we came here so Jupiter through Gemini is going to help us to rewrite our story and um, Jupiter will of course connect with Sedna at the zero degree point of Gemini. So Sedna, again I've done a video about her energy, she is helping us to unlock information and understanding from the depths of our subconscious and also thawing out information that perhaps has been frozen in time. So Jupiter is going to take that and really push it out there and help us to really get a grip of it and see it from um, a much higher, much more expanded level of consciousness. I'm also getting the sense here that because Jupiter is so aligned with freedom, that if there's any parts of us that have been had our minds locked or blocked or imprisoned or entrapped, that Jupiter is likely to set that free. So if we've been subject to mind control or manipulation or any sort of um, repression or suppression in any way, then this is likely to start to open up. And again, this is part of our growth. Jupiter wants us to grow and expand. So any areas where we are being prevented from doing that, Jupiter is going to be supporting us to really move out and to free ourselves. So anywhere where we've had limited beliefs as well, either about ourselves or about the world we live in, again, this is going to be um, addressed and new stories can be written. So where there is more air coming through and there is strong air because Pluto is in Aquarius, Sedna is in Gemini, the sun is now in Gemini, where we have strong air we have more space and we also have frequency. So air for me is light, it is frequency, it is energy, it is also potentially sound, but we have this massive influx of air energy, which is really going to speed things up, get things moving, and also help us to create a lot more space. But the frequencies and the energies are also coming through as solar flares and energies from our sun, which, you know, if you um, are in, I'm, I'm sure you will not, but you will be very aware that we've had a lot of solar activity, a lot of geomagnetic activity over the last, well certainly it's been strong over the last few weeks, but it has been building up for months and even years. But it's my feeling that as Jupiter expands the air energy, this is only going to increase even more. So we have to be mindful 
of our nervous systems and the potential for overwhelm and even burnout or being short circuited because there is so much energy coming in to us through our crown chakra that you know we have to be mindful of being a conductor for it and allowing it to move through us now if there are any parts of us particularly around the upper chakras that are blocked or that are not in free flow currently we are likely to experience some dis-ease now that can include headaches it can include sinus problems pressure around the head and neck problems with the back of the neck with the alter major and um, eye problems ringing in the ears dizziness all those sort of symptoms can be coming through quite strongly at the moment so it's really important that we learn how to channel this energy through and allow it to flow through us and be earthed and grounded in the earth because it's coming through to support us, but also to support earth and to help her to rise in consciousness but i will talk about that at the end of the video so gemini is also about because it's um the sign of the twins the symbol is of, of the twins there is a theme of duality and division and choice so we may find over the next year that you know we are being exposed to even more division even more duality being asked to take sides you know to have an opinion that is against someone else's but again you know try when that is happening to really focus on the opposing energy of Sagittarius which gives you a bigger picture which takes you into the higher mind and you know and that higher consciousness towards a more unified direction which is really where we need to be going at this time so it is certainly a time where you know we are being subjected to some pretty intense upgrades energetic upgrades but it is all for our expansion for our growth for our evolution and it is pushing us to go further to expand to go beyond 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 um, and it is very much about unblocking anything that has become stuck or stagnant and um, up to now because we need to make sure we let go of all of that in order to be able to grow at a personal and a collective level. Now, we have some quite strong galactic um, alignments and activations through Jupiter being in Gemini. I've talked about the Pleiadian connections already. As Jupiter moves through Gemini, he is going to meet stars in the Hades constellation. He will meet up with Aldebaran, which is the star of enlightenment, very linked to Archangel Michael He will, and the mystery schools. He will meet Rigel or Rigel in the Orion constellation, which for me is often about information, teaching and learning, but also associated with mind control and manipulation. So Jupiter may expand those themes for us. Nihal in the Lepus constellation, very associated for me with the Blu-ray frequency, will be activated. Other stars in the Orion constellation and Polaris, which is the North Star, our guiding star, which is the star that really shows us the way. So there is a lot of thick star activations to come over the next year with Jupiter. And also in terms of the cosmic points, he will trine the supergalactic center at the same time um, as he is trining pluto in the early degrees of aquarius for pluto and libra for the supergalactic center he will oppose the great attractor and the galactic center in sagittarius he's going to trine the south node in libra and he will square saturn and neptune in pisces so as these sort of um, aspects come around I will talk about them in more depth but he's going to have a lot of support and a lot of interaction with other parts of the chart as he makes his way through this sign. So just to come back quickly to what I was talking about um, with regards to the solar flares and the heightened energies that are coming through in frequencies, you know, I personally have been struggling quite a lot with discomfort, with disease, 
with challenges around the areas that I talked about. So, you know, it is very important at this time that we learn to as much as possible, especially if we're very sensitive, as I'm sure most people watching this video will be, that we learn to channel these energies efficiently. And that means being grounded, having a connection to earth, you know, getting your bare feet on the land or in the water getting back into nature you know there are other ways to ground your energy you know i've talked about um this in other videos wearing um root chakra colors so red dark browns um, and more neutral colors can really help there's grounding oils there's grounding crystals you can use a grounding mat root vegetables and foods from the land can also help and um, there's also lots of meditations you can do and there's even grounding frequent grounding frequencies available um if you look for you know that sort of music so there are lots of things we can do but i just wanted to share i have just been on a retreat um last weekend with a very good friend and guide and um, Katie Robertson and she was taking us through a meditation and yoga practice that was really based on bringing um, a connection with the root and the third eye and the crown and bringing air down into the root which is designed to create space and to really shine a light and energy into any areas that have become locked or blocked or stagnated that are perhaps you know preventing us from grounding fully into the earth and then actually rather than connecting the third eye and the crown to the higher energies um on the understanding that they are already there and coming through to us being um guiding us to ground our third eye and crown chakra into mother earth directly so i found that incredibly helpful it really helped to shift my sinus problems and my headache um as you know very shortly after doing this practice but it just struck me as a really um quite novel way but really efficient and effective way of grounding our energies in because that is what we are here to do and there's a real sense you know with all these solar flares with all these activations and the higher frequencies that are coming through they are bombarding us you know they are non-negotiable i don't believe that they're going to stop anytime soon but they are there to help us shift and to fast track us into higher consciousness um, into higher levels of consciousness to really move and clear out all the density and everything that we've held blocked that is holding us back they're helping to activate our gifts and to bring us more in line with our soul purpose so that we can just get on and do the work that we came here to do at this time but um, there's a real sense that whereas before a lot of us may have been looking outside, you know, to the stars, to the cosmos, to the universe, to really sort of connect with something outside of ourselves, it is absolutely crucial at this point. And again, this is something that keeps coming through in many of my videos, that we really connect to the earth and to our physical body and that we become fully embodied at this time because it is by being in our body and keeping the channel clear as much as possible um, that we able to ground these higher frequency energies through us. We are effectively conductors. We are antennae. We are here to bring those energies through and to ground them into Mother Earth. And, you know, for many of us who are very much sort of watching the stars, looking at the sky, you know, a real sense of homesickness and longing. And I can totally relate to that because that is 100 percent me. I have found particularly over the weekend that I've just been on that I found a new connection with Mother Earth and with Gaia and with that beautiful, nourishing, nurturing, loving, compassionate energy that she is carrying and she is crying out for us to connect with her because although we may be star seeds and seeded from other plants seeded on earth from other planets we are while we are here we are human and we are part of mother earth and we are absolutely here to connect with her and it is by doing that that we heal ourselves and we heal her so you know we have so many of us have become disconnected from that truth 
but it feels super important for me to share that with you at this time and to really encourage you to find ways to ground and to reconnect because she is just waiting. She is yearning to connect with us, to hold us and to to anchor us in and to remind us how magnificent we are. So, you know, for those of us who have maybe shut down or shut off or disconnected from our gifts, this is absolutely, you know, the next few days you may find that you have got new abilities coming through or you are awakening something that maybe you had shut down or hidden away or turned your back on. But the Taurus, the T Jupiter in Taurus is very much encouraging this and leading the way. It is time to remember, you know, we have an amazing toolkit. We have so many resources, but sometimes we forget that we've got them. So it is time to remember to bring them online and to really put them to good use to support you and others through this exciting transit. So Jupiter is very much leading the way to help us, you know, remember who we are, to have a greater understanding, to bring more air in, to give us a voice, expand the mind and to really release us from anything that has kept us feeling small or living small or being small because Jupiter is all about expansion and growth. So I really hope that you've resonated with some of the information I have shared. I always try and bring something slightly different into my video and I'm also grateful for the comments and the shares and the likes and um, you know it's really good to know that what I'm sharing is resonating with um, some of you and that it is useful so you can find out more about my work at my website which is spiralbright.co.uk and I will be back very soon with more thank you so much for watching